Countdown to Halloween, featuring Gregory Miller's Dark Nights in Candlelight, 31 Tiny October Tales. Every night at exactly midnight, a new story will appear on StoryLink Radio's YouTube channel. You'll have 24 hours to listen, then it will disappear, and the next one will appear. Plan to catch these each day, or you'll miss one. Each story will be 2 to 13 minutes long. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to the introduction to the book right here on this channel. And now, tonight's story from Dark Nights and Candlelight, 31 Tiny October Tales. October 1st, The Ritual Upstairs, the kitchen still smelled faintly of apple crisp and pumpkin pie. The parlor, decked out in black and orange streamers, cardboard skeletons, and motion-activated ghouls, was silent and empty now. In the powder room, still ornamented with soaps shaped like bats and hand towels bearing embroidered witches, its blue nightlight glowing like a suburban will-o'-the-wisp, a dripping faucet provided the only motion and sound. Jack-o'-lanterns sat on tables positioned by window sills their carved features yawning hollows devoid of internal light. Everything was dark. Everything was still. Down in the basement, things were more lively. Horror movies and candy wrappers lay scattered on the floor in front of the television, and candles on the coffee table cast shifting atmospheric illumination. It was approaching midnight, and the three girls all felt giddily tired, their nerves gently frayed by the late hour and too much sugar. Their imaginations given greater freedom because Sarah's parents were quite definitely asleep two floors above. And this night, unlike so many other nights in their short lives, was theirs to spend how they wished. It was the same old story, though none of them, but one, knew it. And they all felt the pull of the strange and uncanny. Before the night was over, they wanted to do something to scare themselves. Uh, that's what Halloween sleepovers were for. Boring, Annie insisted in response to the latest suggestion. We can do better than that. I know, proclaimed Mackenzie. Bloody Mary! A fourth girl, Berenice, who felt neither tired nor giddy, had remained silent for some time. Friday the 13th had not faced her. Not the steamy scenes and certainly not the gory ones. Flashlight storytelling had not provoked so much as a whimper from her either. You really want to play Bloody Mary? She asked, now yawning. The other girls turned to her. No one was really sure why she had been invited. Even Sarah wasn't certain. Berenice was new to the district and kind of awkward, but she sure told good stories. Her flashlight story had made them all scream. Maybe that was the reason she'd asked her over. Or maybe, Sarah considered it, it was because of her maturity. Berenice seemed old beyond her age. What, you think Bloody Mary's boring too? Annie demanded. She wasn't as patient with Berenice as the others were. Kind of, Berenice replied. But we can play it anyway, I guess. There was an old miner's bathroom in the farthest, darkest corners of the basement. Sarah's parents had always meant to remodel it, but the money had never materialized. It was a holdover from the turn of the century, just a, a dank cement floored closet with a metal toilet, rusty ceiling shower head, cracked sink, and a stained mirror. No one ever used it. There weren't even any towels on the rack, and the toilet paper holder was empty. They approached it, flashlights lit. Who wants to go first? Sarah asked. Not me, said Mackenzie. Me neither, said Annie. They all turned to Berenice, who yawned again. If you're so bored, Annie said, smiling thinly. How about you do it, Berenice? Maybe it'll wake you up a bit, especially if, you know, she appears. Berenice looked at her quizzically. You don't like me, do you, Annie? This bores you, but you bore me, Annie shot back. Do something. Berenice nodded. You do it first, then I will. Deal? 
Oh, you scared? Annie demanded, showing her teeth this time. Hey, I think she's scared. Oh, I'll do it, Berenice said evenly. I promise, but this was your idea, so you first. Come on, everyone, let's all go in and watch. That is, unless you're scared, Annie. Jolted by the challenge, they piled into the dank, dark bathroom and shut the door. Remember, you turn off the flashlights and say her name three times, Mackenzie said. Then she comes out of the mirror and gets you, takes your eyes, Sarah added. In the stained, corroded wall mirror, breathless with youthful, entertaining fear, they stared back at themselves. <laughs> well, three of them did. The fourth who stood with them, stared back at nothing. Wait, what? said Sarah. Berenice, where's your, huh? Berenice, what the freak? That's not my name, said the girl who was suddenly not Berenice. She turned to Annie. You first, she said. Her voice was harsh and flat. Annie shook her head rapidly. She was very pale. It was your idea, Annie. The girl, without a reflection, said, Say it. Now her voice was deep, a guttural moan like a sound of a November reed spanned by foul night wind. Mackenzie and Sarah screamed, turned, and jostled the door. <laughs> it would not open. Time distorts so many things. Appearances, events, stories. Rituals. The girl's normal voice had returned, but then she smiled, revealing teeth that now seemed too long, too sharp for her mouth. This is how it really goes down. However, it does bore me. The years stretch back and forward, a long and wearying span. Her head snapped back to face Annie again. You won't say it? Annie, chin trembling, could only stare at the thing in front of her. <laughs> then I will, it said. He clapped its hands. The flashlights all went out at once. There were no screams. Shock had silenced them. Me, the thing said, turning to face the mirror. Me, it repeated. <laughs> Me. And then... The bathroom was completely empty. You've just heard tonight's story from Dark Nights and Candlelight, 31 Tiny October Tales from author Gregory Miller. You can get this book right now on Amazon at the on-screen link. And Kindle Unlimited users can borrow a copy of the book for free. You can learn more about Gregory Miller and his many amazing books and projects at his website on screen. If you have not already, be sure to listen to our event video here and visit our event website to learn all about our upcoming events. Remember to come back after midnight for our next tale. Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for Storylink Radio.